Hey y'all, I'm Squid, and I have a crazy battle for you today. I'm battling my buddy K-Snake. Now, this battle is uh, it's a little special. One, because it's extremely old. Like, this is a battle that took place uh, like as soon as a Poke Bank opened. So, it's very old. Uh, there is a Mega Lucario on K-Snake's team. And uh, so, it, it's all pre-banned, pre smogan bans to Ubers and all that. So... And also, we don't have any 6th gen Pokemon. You know, everything is just straight out of Pokebank. So, uh, I have all stuff that I bred back in 5th gen with me. K-Snake has all his 5th gen stuff or whatever he bred in 6th gen. I'm not sure what he had exactly. But, a little background first. K-Snake. Every time that I battle him, no matter like what it is, we've always had like incredible, epic crazy wild battles like i can't even express it like I, I don't even like if you had like the universe in your hand and that shit just blew up like that's what happens every time that we step on a battlefield and pokemon together so uh expect a good one and if you want me and case snake to battle again you know leave a like because i will find him and i will ask him i'll be like dude we haven't battled in ages let's get another battle so that's what's gonna happen also i will leave his uh links in the description below there is his k-snake channel he did just open up a new channel called uh chaotic charizard hd so go check those out he i highly recommend him this guy has been you know i've known him since i like started uploading uh good friend of mine so we have this crazy crazy battle uh really quick teams i got jump bluff electros uh chandelier amber palm this is the one and only time that you'll ever, ever see me use an Umbreon. And I have Mega Agron on his side. He's got some threats. He's got Bisharp, uh, Tyranitar, Azumarill, Dusclops, Mega Lucario, and Rotom Wash. I want to get right into this because this battle is so insane. It's crazy. Now, what's going to happen is I figured he's probably going to end up leading off with a Rotom Wash just because, you know, it's, it's a great lead for OU in general. Or not OU, just in general, it's a great lead with the Volt Switch initiative. So, he's actually going to end up switching, like, hard switching right out. And he's going to end up going into his Dusclops. Because he needs something that's going to deal with my uh, my Jump Bluff. Which I guess he felt was a Dusclops to start off. So, I'm going to sub. Because I knew I could have taken at least one Volt Switch. And then set up a sub after. Since I am running max HP, max speed as a support set. And I actually get the sub on the Switch, which is perfect. And then I'm going to end up going for a Leech Seed. And this works out even better, so I'm off to a good start. Is he's going to go for Sub on Dusclops. So not only is he going to lose 25% of his health from the Sub, but he's also going to lose uh, residual damage from the Leech Seed as well. So now he's going to be forced to switch here. He's going to end up going into his Tyranitar. Because, you know, Rocks can definitely take me down. Uh, he definitely has a Stab Crunch to hit me. But I'm going to end up going for the Encore. Trying to Encore him into the Substitute and then just work from there. Now, I'm going to end up going for Elite Seed, just because, you know, he really can't touch me. I do have the sub up right now, so I know I can take any one hit. So, he's going to end up going for the Crunch. Now, this is this is good, because now what my plan is, I know I could take any Crunch, or pretty much, uh, well, I know I can take a Crunch, and I'm going to end up going for uh, a specific move here that's going to lock him into that, and that move is going to be Encore, but I have a plan. Remember, I do have Agron in my back pocket as my defensive wall. Now, also, this was, you know, very early in 6th gen. You know, everyone was still getting used to it. And uh, the fact that Steel-type has lost its resistance to Dark-type may have slipped my mind, but it's still a good play in my opinion because uh, it's a crunch, and I am fully invested in HP and defense, so it's not going to be doing much. And with that, I can have like a free opportunity to attack with an Iron Head, an Earthquake, or set up my Stealth Rocks. So now, what I'm going to do here, since he is Encored into the Crunch now, I'm going to switch out and go into my Aggron. And now, K-Snake knows better than that. So what he's going to do is he's actually going to switch out into his Lucario to counter my switch into Aggron, which is huge. Now, I know I can take at least one hit just for the fact that I have Sturdy. So what I'm going to do here is while he Mega Evolves, 
I, I figure he's probably going to go for an Aurora Sphere. He's going to go for close combat and uh, completely destroy my face. But he's going to opt to go for Dark Pulse, predicting me to go into my Chandelure to take the Fighting type attack. Which I actually end up living a crit, but that's probably because of the Sandstorm boost. So I'm just, I don't want to mess around with Lucario, because I want to go straight for an Earthquake, and I almost take it out. If I was uh, running Adamant and, you know, Earthquake and all that, it definitely would have taken him out. But here, I'm just going to Mega Evolve, just because, you know, it was brand new to me, and I wanted to see a Mega Aggron, and I, I did. So, what happens is he's just going to go for the Aurora Sphere. There's no more Sandstorm, so that 50% buff on Steel Types... Four special defense is going to be gone, and that Aurora Sphere is going to destroy my face completely. Absolutely completely. So now, I really don't have too much to uh, end up taking out this Lucario. So what I'm going to do is go into... Well, what I mean by that is I don't have very speedy things to take him down. So I'm going to go into my Ammo Palm here, go for the Fake Out. So I really don't want to mess around with Mega Lucario. We all know how completely vicious that thing is. Now, he goes into Dusclops to be immune to my Fake Out, and I predict him to go for a Will-O-Wisp here. So I go into Chandelier, get my Flash Fire boost, and now I know he really can't touch me, so I'm going to end up going for a sub on this turn. And it actually works out really well because most people see Chandelier as like a Scarf or whatever, and he figured he can just go for a Pain Split, knowing that he can take at least a Fire Blast, and then uh, gain all of his health back, and then possibly switch out to whatever. But he reveals that he does have the Shadow Sneak here. And I figured, alright, I know these things have a Violite, they're very bulky, and they usually run specially defensive, but I'm modest, Flash Fire Boost, Stab, Fire Blast, doesn't even take it out, which is ridiculous. That's a whole lot of damage that thing just soaked up. But the good thing is, he's in Revengeable Range along with the Lucario. Now he's going to switch out, and for here, I, I guess I had a brain fart at the time, and was like, alright, you know what, nothing really wants to take a Shadow Ball, I don't want to risk a Fire Blast missing. And uh, he actually switches into his Tyranitar, who is going to eat that hit up. He does resist it, and uh, the Sandstorm is up as well, so I will be forced to switch here. Because I want to keep my Chandelier for later, because I feel like it has, you know, a presence on the field that I'm going to be, you know, needing it later. So, I'm going to end up switching out here, and uh, I really am going to need a pivot at this point. And now, the, well, I need to wall this instead. I'm going to bring out my Umbreon. And now, he's going to end up going for a Dragon Dance, and I wasn't ready for that. I normally uh, don't see Dragon Dancing Tyranitars, so I, I'm a little scared at this point. I do have my Umbreon to try and deal with this. This is my, my other wall. This is my specially defensive wall. But what he's going to do is go for Stone Edge. Now, unfortunately for him, he's going to miss the plus one Stone Edge. I'm going to end up going for Yawn. Now, I am running a Yawn Curse a Payback set. I'm not sure what the last move is on this. Because, uh, honestly, I, I don't use it. Now, he's either going to be forced to go to sleep, or he's going to be forced to uh, to switch out. Now, he's going to go into the Azumarill. Now, as we know, Azumarill did gain the Fairy Typing. And uh, I, I guess it must have, you know, being new to 6th Gen at this time, completely forgot that Dark was going to be uh, weak to that, and it's going to resist my attacks as well. Now, what's going to happen is, he's going to end up going for a Play Rough. And I, you're very used to, you know, seeing choice bands of Zoomer Owls, I do take it well because of the plus one, and I am going to return with a plus one uh, payback as well. And you would think that, you know, him almost killing me, and I'm also at plus one plus stab, even though I am defensive, it would have done at least a little bit more than that, but uh, I don't catch that break. He realizes that I literally can't touch him at all, and he's going to take this opportunity to go for a belly drum literally right in my face. I can't do anything about it. Now, at this point, I figure, you know, he's just going to kill me. I'm going to go for, you know, whatever. I end up going for the Yawn here. And uh, I, I, I doubt that that was predicted because, you know, I'm so used to seeing, uh, you know, choice banded sets. I figured he'd probably just go for an Aqua Jet or a Waterfall to take me out. But I felt like I had nothing to really lose there. So I go for the Yawn. Now, he ends up going for the Aqua Jet, which forces him to go to sleep. And since he also took me out, I get a free switch into whatever I like. Now, I'm going to take full advantage to the fact that he is asleep. And also, side note, this is probably the only time you'll ever see me use any kind of sleep either, or on purpose. So, I'm going to use a substitute, because I know he's stuck to be asleep for at least, I think it's like three turns. That's rest, but he could get an early turn wake up. But, turns out he's still going to be asleep. Now, I'm going to be able to go for an energy ball. I do reveal that I have it now, and I'm going to be able to take him out. And the good news is now, I have a chandelier behind a sub. Now, this is an extremely scary scenario for him, and 
he needs to find a way to deal with it. Now, I guess he figured that the best way to deal with this is to go into Tyranitar, because not only does he resist, you know, like, bolt stabs, but he also gets a Sandstorm boost as well, and the only thing I have to hit him with is Energy Ball. Now, Energy Ball, it is a strong attack, it is unstabbed, it's great for coverage, but it's not going to be enough to take him out on this turn. And he knows he can take one, so what he's going to do is he's going to set up right in my face again, uh, you know, playing risky, and he's going to end up going for a crunch. You know, because he doesn't want to risk a Stone Edge miss, and he it's also super effective as well. So, with the leftovers there, he's going to gain a little bit more recovery. And he's going to go first now because of the Dragon Dance, and he's going to be able to knock out my sub. But if I can get, like, a max roll on a, an Energy Ball, but he's just going to go for Earthquake, take me out. Now, if I can get a max roll on, a Earth, on a, uh, an Energy Ball, it should be enough to take him out. Like, I should just be able to nudge him over that line. But no, but, but no, check that out. K-Snake lives on like literally one HP. I, I could barely see that from the screen. He lives, and he's going to be able to outspeed me. So that means now I'm put in a corner where I literally have to just let something die. And unfortunately, the only thing I really have that can die is going to end up being my jump bluff here. So he's just going to end up going for a crunch because it's safe. He knows that if he goes for Earthquake again, you know, I will end up dodging that. So crunch was his best bet. Thank goodness he wasn't carrying Pursuit or else I would be a very sad squid. Now, I do get a free switch into whatever I'd like. And uh, I figured my best bet, I have to go into Ampom because he is at plus one. I need Fake Out to work for me. Uh, even if he does sw switch into the Dusclops, at this point, uh, his range of health, I can go for a beat up and end up taking him out. Because I don't have knockoff on this. I ended up running a beat up instead. Because I, I liked it for uh, <clears throat> for like lead things. Like if people like to lead with uh, ghost types. And they figure I'd switch. I can hit him with a beat up. So he's going to end up going into Rotom here. I'm going to go into Electros. Now he's going to end up going for the Hydro Pump. Knowing that I'm going to switch. You know fearing the Scarf. Because he hasn't shown anything else yet. And I can't afford to lose that. My Ammon Palm. So he's going to end up going for the Will-O-Wisp. Revealing to me that he's not scarfed in any way. And I'm going to end up going for the Grass Knot. Uh, at the time, I was like, oh, you know what? I have a Grass move. It's super effective on Rotom. Grass Knot does not do a damn thing to Rotom because it's so light. He's such a small, light Pokemon that it's not going to do anything. Now, he also reveals to me that he has the, uh, the Volt Switch. And here, I'm just going to opt to go for a Thunderbolt. I know it's resisted, but uh, it's really not going to be doing much. I believe it's resisted. Well, excuse me for that, because I really don't know at this moment. Now, he's going to go into Lucario just to fodder it off. And, uh, actually, you know what? I think Thunderbolt is neutral. It makes sense. Alright, well, I, I wish I would have went for the Thunderbolt instead. So, anyway, Lucario goes down. He's going to end up going into the Bisharp here. And this is where he's going to go for knockoff. I don't stand a chance. Uh, I, I do have Flamethrower on that, so I would have been super effective. I also had the Expert Belt. But uh, he outspeeds and knockoff is so overpowered, this gen is ridiculous. Now, he's going to end up switching out his Bisharp here because he knows he needs to keep it for my Chandelier later on. So that was a good switch on his part. But also, I wasn't going to go for beat up just for the fact that uh, it's not going to do a, a dang thing to it. Now, I can uh, end up going for beat up this turn for the Dusclops, end up taking it out. Really didn't matter what, you know, because it was at so low of HP, I really could have done anything that would have hit it. Which the only thing I do have to hit it is beat up, so that's the correct play. Now, he's going to bring the Bisharp back in. He knows he can go for a Sucker Punch. All I have left is my Amber Palm and my Chandelure. Now, I wasn't going to risk switching in Chandelure predicting his Sucker Punch because that would be silly. Because if he went for a knockoff, I would be completely out of luck. So now, it's down to Chandelure. I'm going to go for a sub predicting him to Sucker Punch on the first turn. This also shows that I am faster than him. So now he's kind of forced to go for a Sucker Punch to take me out, thinking that I won't go for another substitute while he would knock off just to get me, get my sub knocked out so that I'd be at too low of health to set up another sub. Whew, that is a mouthful. Now, what's going to happen is he's going to go for the Sucker Punch, so I catch him on that, get a free sub up. Now, that means that he's forced to go for Sucker Punch to knock out my sub because he needs the sub to not be there so that I can... He can get uh, an attack off with a Rotom. Now, he's going to go for Sucker Punch, take out my sub, and I'm going to go for Fire Blast because that's my only hope to take this guy out. Now, Fire Blast, thank God, 
is going to hit because sometimes it, it just misses. If that would have missed, that would have been extremely, extremely sad. Now, we have finally worked our way into a 1v1. I'm not sure what kind of spread he has on his Rotom. He may outspeed me. I may outspeed him because I am running, you know, modest with max speed. He is at a very high. I, I end up outspeed. I can go for an energy ball. It's super effective. I'm modest. It's not enough. He ends up going for a hydro pump. I need hydro pump to miss to win this. He's going to end up connecting and uh, he's going to end up beating me here. But this this battle, the plays, uh, the, the mental thought, the process, I, it's absolutely incredible. I, I love this battle. I'm so glad that I found it. And I'm, I'm glad that I'm going to upload it. So uh, this was a long one. Thank you guys for sticking with me through the whole end uh once again uh i hope you guys enjoyed it i'm heading out of here you know i just got to go think about this battle because it was just so great so uh i'll catch you guys next time bye